Welcome, Welcome to Fab Lab. Lab. This is the show that explores the cool ways science, tech, and innovation are making the world a better place. I'm Carrie. I'm Asia. I'm Nick. And I'm Maddie. This, this is Fab Lab. Lab. Welcome to Fab Lab, where we uncover stories of inspiring people who are using science and technology to make the world a better place. And what better place to do it than here at The Cove at UC Irvine, which is a hub for scientific innovation. Now, last time on the show, we talked about the global water crisis. Today, we're still talking about water, but this time we're going to talk about the ocean and specifically uh, the coral reef that live inside of it. Yes, the coral reef, everyone remembers Finding Nemo. That was oh, yeah. such a big hit. <laughs> <laughs> so colorful. Nemo lived in the Great Barrier Coral Reef, right, in yeah. Australia. But things are happening there that, you know, aren't good for the coral reef. So just like Nemo, thousands of other fish species live in the coral reefs. It's basically the rainforest of the ocean. And coral reefs only make up 0.2% of the ocean's floor, but they're home to 25% wow. of marine wow. fish species. Unfortunately, these coral reefs are being devastated. Like you said, they're just losing ground due to climate change and water pollution. And that's why today's episode is all about coral conservation. It's obviously very important, and we don't want it to go away. In fact, these guys over at the California Academy of Sciences in San Francisco have used science in a way to regrow coral. Cool. Wow. So they literally they can regrow it and then put it back into the ocean so it doesn't go away permanently. In fact, we have a little piece about it. Check this out. Sweet. Coral reefs are actually amazingly resilient, but right now there's a very powerful onslaught of different impacts, uh, mostly caused by humans. Destructive fishing practices, uh, sedimentation and runoff from coastal development, climate change and global warming, and you add ocean acidification. Uh, the sort of cocktail of all of these things put together uh, really is a greater threat to the corals than they're able to overcome on their own. What we do is we travel uh, to coral reefs and we collect the sperm and the egg from the corals as they're spawning. We fertilize those in the laboratory and nurture the little baby corals and then we're able to put that, those back out onto the reef uh, to rebuild populations that have been degraded. Uh, we have two tanks that are set up in here specifically to cultivate coral. This one uh, has coral that we collected ourselves mostly in the Philippines as small fragments and then what we did is we brought those little fragments back and we glue them down onto rocks or little plugs and we grow them into larger colonies which we can then fragment again and again. And that's really a, a sustainable collection plan for us. My end goal is to help make sure that coral reefs persist in the future uh, so that my children and my two daughters and their children can grow up and know the same sort of beauty and, and wonder of coral reefs that I've been fortunate enough to experience. So one thing I found really interesting about what these guys are doing is they're coming up with almost 100% success rates with wow. fertilization. Wow, that's like an A++. plus plus. It's a lot of coral babies. Tons. <laughs> More coral talk right after this. Up next on Fab Lab, we'll show you a new method of enhancing the growth of aquatic organisms. The innovation continues. Support for Fab Lab comes from our friends at Samsung Salt for Tomorrow, Lenovo Fab Finder, Brocade, Ally Bank, Motorola Mobility Foundation, and the Good Entertainment Foundation. We are back at Fab Lab, and today we've been discussing coral reef conservation. We've had a lot of great stories so far, so who has our next? pitch of the day. Uh, I do. Um, I was reading about this woman named Delphine. She's pioneering this new kind of technology uh, that builds artificial reefs made from metal rods that are surged with electricity and they put them down in the ocean and the coral reef that grow on top of them grow really fast. The fish flock to it uh, and it's called bio rocks. It's pretty cool. Uh, that's because bio rocks. <laughs> My name is Delphine Rowe, project manager for Reef Restoration Project, and for that we're using the Biorock technology. In Delphine's observations of the ocean, she noticed that significant changes in water temperatures had caused reefs to die from coral bleaching. We're destroying the reef all around the world by overfishing, pollution, mass coral bleaching, and that's from global warming. So she teamed up with the Global Coral Reef Alliance and an international team of scientists, engineers, and even artists to prototype 
prototype BioRock, an artificial reef system that creates underwater habitats. They are made from welded metal rods and given a super special feature, electricity. You power a little bit with maybe two to five volts into the metals. The result is that the holes are gonna grow much faster. This produces a thick layer of calcium carbonate and makes the perfect place to regenerate broken off pieces of coral that divers collect from the sea bottom and tie to the structures. Because of the tiny electrical charge, coral on BioRock grows eight times faster than normal. Positive results are nearly instantaneous. We have now about 127 biorock reefs, but we cannot place biorocks everywhere. So it's better to protect the reef than uh, restoring after destruction. Delphine's hope is that we will all become more aware of our oceans, reefs, marine life, and what we can do to help. Thanks, Delphine. That was a really awesome story. I mean, the nursery reminds me of like an actual baby nursery with the mobile on the top. It kind of sings the kids to sleep. They definitely resemble that. I and mean, you know, and it's man-made too, which I think is really interesting. I mean, it's not nature, but it's a solution nonetheless for this coral problem. And well, speaking of coral and oceans, uh, for our next piece, I go scuba diving. Do you know what scuba is an acronym for? Yeah. Is so. Uh, uh, no, so, no. Uh, Self-contained underwater breathing apparatus. That was my next guess. Drop Duh. Yeah. Who doesn't know that? <laughs> Coming up next, your favorite scuba diver, Nick, takes us underwater to look at the kelp. Back here at Fab Lab, we've been talking all about coral, which is why I'm confused Nick scuba dive to check out the kelp. Yeah, Nick, can you tell us more about it? Maybe kelp us out a little bit? Ooh, I will kelp <laughs> you guys out. Okay, so kelp forests are very similar to coral reefs. They provide area for all these little sea creatures to live. In fact, they support over 1,000 different species under the sea. Um, another thing is that they don't really like warm water, and that's actually why they're going away, is that El Nino and climate change is making the water too warm for them to survive, as well as uh, pollution and things that humans are creating as well. So I went down under the sea to check out the current condition of these kelp forests. Let's take a look. I'm here at Casino Point on Catalina Island, a small island 30 miles off the coast of Southern California. And I came out here to explore the kelp forests or what's left of them. Today, we're gonna be talking all about kelp, the importance of them and why they're disappearing. All right, it's time to get uh, suited up. I need the warmest thing possible. The water is 64 degrees, but I don't think you guys understand how fragile I am. You just do it, man. forests are made of kelp and kelp is a large brown green algae that grow in cold water they provide an area for lots of other sea creatures to live in fact they provide an area for over 1,000 species of both plants and animals to live kelp forests prefer very cold nutrient rich water somewhere between 50 and 60 degrees Fahrenheit because of El Nino, there have been more severe storms which have uprooted the kelp plants. El Nino also brings warm water and kelp plants don't like warm water, which is another reason that there has been less and less of these kelp forests. Over the past 90 to 100 years, we've lost about 89 to 90% of our kelp forests. We used to have sea otters out here, and that's a natural predator to the sea urchin. When those were hunted, urchins began to take over. So it's just like a chain, you know? It's like yeah. a food chain. It's a domino effect. So there is something that humans can do to save the kelp forest. Absolutely. LA Waterkeeper started the kelp restoration project back in 1996. They are depending on volunteer divers to help restore the kelp forest and remove urchin barrens. So one step at a time, we can get the kelp forest back. All right, we're back on the surface. We saw some kelp plants. They do exist, although I'm excited to know that uh, the kelp is still living and that there's a chance for these forests to grow back. All right, back to Fab Lab. Nick, it looked freezing in that water. How cold was it? It was so cold. It was 64 degrees, but apparently that's not cold enough for the kelp. In fact, that's actually why they're going away. 
It was really cool too that you saw a lot of Garibaldi's down there because they're one of California state fish and Garibaldi is also the name of a nice restaurant, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a nice restaurant. <laughs> um, in fact, yeah, those were the uh, orange fish that you saw attacking the camera. I also have another story about ocean cleanup. Uh, you know, a lot of people love to swim in the ocean. I mean, not me. I have an irrational fear of sea monsters that probably don't exist. But for the people that do like to swim in the ocean, you know, why not swim while helping to clean it mm. cool. in the story that we're going to check out right now? Our mission for the sponge uh, bikini is using this technology that we have developed, we call sponge material, and integrate that into a variable technology so that, you know, personally everybody can do cleaning of the environment. And this uh, material is being embedded into a 3D printed uh, version of a bikini. And when you swim, so you will be cleaning any kind of like pollutants around you. As you can see, it's, it's pretty dark, so you should be able to see it. It spreads out really wide. And so this is kind of the same thing that you would have if you had an oil slick after an oil spill. So that's no problem for the sponge material. The sponge material can uh, be applied with a magnet just to that particular stain and suck it all right up. And it sucks it right up, no problem. Up next on Fab Lab, an invention that helps clean plastic from the ocean. We've been talking a lot about coral conservation today, which is directly related to ocean conservation, wouldn't you guys say? I totally agree with you, Carrie. I mean, coral are not picky eaters at all. They will eat anything, all this pollution, plastics, everything that's in the ocean, and it kills them, which is really bad. So our next piece is gonna discuss ocean cleanup. There's a young innovator who is really doing his part to just get all that bad stuff out of the water. Take a look. So we're here in San Francisco Bay right now where just the first three boats of the mega expedition came uh, into port. The goal of the mega expedition was to find out how much plastic is actually in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch in preparation for its cleanup by 2020. If we want to do something different, shouldn't we also have to think differently? Get all the plastics out and simultaneously remove tons and tons of persistent organic pollutants from the marine environment. Let's use our enemy to our advantage, okay? The oceanic currents moving around is not an obstacle. It's a solution. Why move through the oceans if the oceans can move through you? By fixing the ships to the seabed and letting the rotating currents do their work, vast amounts of funds, manpower, and emissions will be saved. The platforms will, of course, be completely self-supportive, receiving their energy from the sun, currents, and waves. And what happens is that this big stuff breaks down into smaller pieces because of the UV radiation and because of the wave action, and thereby starts to imitate the small planktonic creatures and thereby ends up in the food chain, which is sort of a bad thing. And this is why it's so urgent that we clean this up. Coming up on Fab Lab, we tap into girl power with a special brainstorm at the Samsung Solve for Tomorrow Lunchroom Launchpad. Guys, we've been covering a lot of ground today. We've talked about coral reef restoration, kelp help, how to clean the ocean with swimsuits. Uh, but one thing that we really love doing here is talking to young, innovative girls about their ideas. And Maddie, you recently had a chance to talk to some young Girl Scouts, right? Exactly, Carrie. They were so brilliant. These girls came up with amazing ideas to help save coral reefs, from 3D printing models to water temperature apps. Let's check it out. Hey, I'm here with some amazing Girl Scouts, and we're brainstorming ways to use science and technology to save coral reefs. Does anyone want to tell me a little bit about why coral reefs are threatened? Coral reefs are really sensitive to temperature. They can't really survive in warm climates. Carbonic acid is made and that makes the oceans more acidic and more hot. So 
they undergo a process called bleaching in which they turn white and die. So how do you think we could use science and technology to do that? We could get a buoy like they have in the ocean and we could put a thermometer to track when water gets hot and cold. That's a great idea. And also genetically engineer coral to be less sensitive to temperature and able to survive in warmer climates. So super coral. Does anyone have an idea though about how do we address the problem when it's already happened? We could also have a machine that plants coral that would like go underwater. So that divers kind of, don't have to do it. It could right. be faster, more efficient. That's a great idea. Great job guys. I'm so proud of you and also just inspired by you because these are really amazing ideas. Thank you for being here and, and keep thinking, keep brainstorming. <laughs> I was so proud of the girls. They really thought outside of the box, got engaged, and came up with some great solutions to help save coral reefs. So we know that every week we have a celebrity segment. We discuss what they're doing, what they're up to, give the dish on how they're trying to make the world a better place. So Nick, I think you have our yes, celebrity I do. for this so week. Our celebrity for this week is Leonardo DiCaprio. As a passionate environmentalist, DiCaprio formed the Leonardo DiCaprio Foundation in 1998. For almost 20 years, LDF tackled some of the world's most pressing environmental issues. From climate and wildlands conservation to protecting biodiversity and ocean conservation. How effective is Leo and LDF? Check this out. Since 2010, LDF awarded over $30 million in grants, funding 78 projects in over 44 countries. On social media, Leo has developed an environmental army, growing his followers from 500,000 in 2007 to over 25 million in 2015. Whether speaking at the UN or at the Paris Global Warming Summit, DiCaprio is one of Hollywood's and the world's premier environmental activists. You know, Leonardo DiCaprio's foundation is really impressive, much like his performance in Baz Luhrmann's 1996 adaptation of Romeo and Juliet. Uh, I really liked that movie a lot. You know, another thing that I liked a lot was the scuba segment. Yeah. I just was like so into it. And um, just so you guys know, if I've been talking really loud, it's because I still have water in my ear. You're actually just, scuba you're dinner. always at that volume. So <laughs> nothing's changed. Nothing's Good. new here today. <laughs> my favorite story was about the sponge suit. That was such an awesome concept. I mean, why not use something that we use already to clean the ocean? Yeah. yeah. And I'm still amazed by Boy and Slut's plastic collecting invention. Just like these stories, we have a lot more coming up next time on Fab Lab. I say we end with an air high five today? Yeah. Let's do yeah. it. Yeah. All right, yeah. go team. We've been talking a lot about uh, coral conservation today, but I think it's also, wait, I got it, sorry. Uh, let's take a look at the story that took me so long to set up. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so these microplastics, they, they not so. organisms. <laughs> Covers uh, a, a, the young guy. Sorry. You got it. That was good. That was really good. <laughs>